A type 1 treatment is a fuel reduction treatment in a forest like this where there's lots of dense conifer understory that's highly flammable and what we're usually doing is thinning the forest from below meaning we're taking out a lot of the smaller trees and spacing them out and trying to have less fuel on the ground and in, in the mid canopy like what we call ladder fuel so if a fire gets started which inevitably will at some point the fire is not going to be too hot and uh, not move too uncontrollably or into the canopy. We carry out these type 1 treatments in order to reduce the fuel loading in the forest and break up the fuel so there's not continuity of fuels horizontally or vertically so that fires that can get started are not as risky. Uh, we do them mostly near communities because we're in the interface right between houses. You know, there's houses right over here and over here and, and forest right in the middle of town. So we're trying to uh, reduce the fuels that's right up against uh, communities. And at the same time, we're, we're opening up the understory of the forest that's sort of been choked in with ingrowth over the last 50, 80, 100 years since the last big fires. So we're actually doing a little bit of restoration of more of the semi-open or mixed conditions that were here naturally. Uh, the forests that we have now are uh, very thick, generally in the West Kootenays. Um, they are very dense and not much diversity actually in, in some of them. So as well as reducing the fuel loads, we're also uh, helping to return to some more natural conditions. Most of the work, I would say maybe 85% is, is done by burning the material, the fuel. But often it looks really nice when you end up chipping the material. So the guys stage it on the side of the road and we go after and we bring the chipper and then we just feed the trees and then it all goes back into the earth. It creates this nice mulching effect pretty much. And we all know that we are having very hot summers in the Kootenays now and it's awesome, it retains the water on the ground. And at one point you can't burn anymore. So let's say this year was June 13, I believe. So you're not able to burn anymore. So pretty much we have to stop working, but because of the chipping, uh, we can just carry on into the hot months. And it's just another way of uh, disposing of the fuel. So the, the thing to know about type 1 that's very important is as, as you're planning for a landscape scale strategic wildfire protection plan is that it is the most expensive type of treatment. You know, our average here in the West Kootenays is about $7,000 a hectare for us at CIFCO. I think other people even have a higher average than that. So it's not something that you can scale at a, you know, at a broad scale because it's too expensive. Type 1 is, is a very good treatment type to use in areas that are very close to communities. You can also use that type of treatment in very sensitive areas. If you're looking for a landscape scale fuel breaks, it's going to have many different types across the fuel break. And type one would often be the one that we use to tie areas together. So you're going to have an area where you're going to do a type two, and in our area, we're going to do a type four, and then you'll use type one in the areas that are sensitive to tie them together. We use that type of treatment also in recreational areas. And I think what's, what's very important to know is that when you're planning your landscape size fuel breaks, you want to use type one as little as possible. So you really focus on these sensitive areas, you focus on these uh, areas that will tie your fuel breaks together. And Type 1 is also a very good type to use in areas that are hard to access. So areas that you cannot bring machinery in, that crews need to walk into. Uh, it's the perfect type of treatment for that. As CIFCO's consulting forester, my job is to come into an area like this, determine if it's appropriate for a fuel treatment, and also look at the area to see if there are any other values that we need to be protecting in the forest that are not related to fuels. So, you know, we're here because we're trying to reduce the fuel loads, but at the same time, we're working in a, a natural ecosystem and there are lots of visual and recreational and wildlife and water values that we need to also be protecting at the same time. So part of my job is to make sure that by doing this work, we're, we're, we're lowering the fire risk while maintaining or potentially improving a lot of those other 
values in the forest.